This is Z Train, where I train you to win. So get aboard. I know where you're going, and I'm going to help you get there in style. Now, as you know, for the past couple of weeks, we have been uh, in a new series called Honey from the Rock, uh, short and sweet. And we've been going through the book of Ephesians verse by verse, and we're up to episode 10. And uh, we're going to start with uh, Ephesians 2, verse 2. So let's read together. Uh, we'll see how many verses we get. I think just one verse. Uh, Ephesians 2, 2. We're in. In times past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Father, thank you for the reading of the word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation that causes us to see, hear, and understand what you want us to do, what you want us to know so that we can have accurate insight into the true nature of things. And bless me to be uh, a vessel of honor you can use today. Amen. All righty. Where in, in times past you walk, that means you are occupied, preoccupied, or are caught up in the things of this world, this world system, this present age and everything that's in it. All the politics and all the social turmoil and interpersonal things, uh, societal things, you know, buying and selling, economics, everything, if you will, everything in the world. And it's easy to get caught up in this stuff. And uh, Paul said, in times past, you were occupied with the course of this world. Uh, Philip's translation, I like it. It says, uh, to those of you who are spiritually dead, all the time you drifted along on the stream of this world's idea of living, obeying the unseen ruler. There is an unseen ruler of this age. So back to the King James Version. According to the prince of the power of the air, I'm going to talk in, in depth about this. We're going to expose the prince of darkness. Uh, Paul calls him the prince of the power of the air that now works in the children of disobedience are those who are obstinate, those who are resistant to the will of God and the things of God. Don't be stubborn. Don't be obstinate. Don't resist the word of God and the will of God because that's what the devil's children do. They, they are, they're contrary, they're living contrary to the word of God and the will of God. Uh, Satan has an agenda. He's called the prince of the power of the world. Second Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's called the god of this world. I prefer to say demigod. He's not really a god. He's just set himself up to be god, and he wants to be worshipped as god. He wants to be feared and obeyed, and he wants to oppose god in every way, oppose the church, oppose the will of God, oppose the word of God, oppose everything that's good, oppose the, the will of heaven and, and the kingdom of God. Satan has set himself up to stop, to slow down, and to uh, keep people from obeying the will of God. Now then, you and I need to be very careful that we don't get caught up in the world's affairs and lose sight of what our real objective is. Praise God. This is a very important message, so I want you to pay attention to this. It's going to be short and sweet. It's honey from the rock, right? Um, let, me, let me read it in the voice translation. This is pretty, uh, pretty good. You were the offspring of the prince of the power of the air. Oh, how he owned you, just as he still controls those who are living in disobedience. Listen, it's real simple. Either we're controlled by the Holy Spirit uh, we're controlled by the prince of this world. It, there's no in-between. There's no gray area. You're either on God's side or by default, whether you want to or not, doing the work of the devil. A lot of Christians find themselves on the wrong side of the fence because they're resistant to the will of God. They're resistant to the word of God. Uh, they quench the Holy Spirit. They grieve the Holy Spirit. They don't want to go along with the Holy Spirit's agenda. They don't like the ordinance of, of God. God says tithe. I don't like tithing. <laughs> Neither does the devil. And the, the Bible says give. I don't like giving. Well, neither does the devil. He doesn't like it when you give to the kingdom. Uh, witness for, for Jesus. Be a witness for Jesus. Oh, I, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what the devil wants you to believe is that you can't do that. You see, if you're not 
for God and his agenda wholeheartedly, heartedly, then whose agenda are we for? It's really that simple. And I believe that Paul is making that distinction because he's saying there's, there's two ways to go about this. You can either be on God's side or you can be on the devil's side, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of obstinance, the stubborn ones, those who are resistant to the will of God. This is a very important message. Of 2 Corinthians 4, 4, I want to tie this in here uh, about the God of this world. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now, let's stop right here. We're not talking about just, you know, believing in Jesus, yea or nay. We're talking about believing the Bible, believing God's will for us, believing God's agenda, believing uh, in what the Word says about all the different uh, aspects of our lives. A lot of people just, uh, you know, God is okay on Sunday morning, but when it comes to work, they have a different agenda. When it comes to their money, they have a different agenda. When it comes to, you know, relationships and family, they have a different agenda. No, we ought to have one agenda, and that is to do the will of God from the heart. Let me hear an amen. This is good stuff. The God of this world has blinded the minds of those who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, of the atmosphere. The Greeks had three words for heaven. Uh, the highest, of course, is, uh, is the, the realm of God himself, the uh, celestial, the, uh, the divine, the place where God's throne is. The place where the headquarters of God is, right? New Jerusalem, the throne of God, the tabernacle that God pitched, the sea of glass, the river of life, the streets of gold, um, you know, the holy city, the pearly gates, all that stuff, all the angels and the cloud of witnesses, that's the highest heaven. And uh, below that is the uh, atmospheric, I beg your pardon, the celestial heaven, or what's a better word for it, the cosmos. Uh, the moon, the stars, the sun, galaxies, nebula, everything in this universe, that's the second heaven. So the highest heaven is where God is, uh, where his throne is. The, the second word for heaven is the starry heavens. And then the third word for, word for heaven, and this confuses people, is the atmosphere of this world. Actually, not the upper stratosphere, but the lower, denser air. That's where the enemy is. That's where Satan's kingdom is. It's in this space right above our heads from, from the ground up uh, where people are, where, where populations are concentrated in cities, the air we breathe, the, the atmosphere in which we move. That's where the prince of the power of the air has set up his kingdom. Now, the word prince is the Greek word archon, and it means, it means ruler, the ruler of this present age, the prince. And uh, God did not make him a prince. Prince of the power. The word power is exousia, and it means authority. So the prince of the authority, who is the authority of this world system. And you say, well, well how did the, the devil get to be the authority? Did God give him authority? No, he did not. Satan usurped Adam's authority. God gave authority to Adam to take dominion over the entire world. You know, what is man that you're mindful of? You've made him a little lower than Elohim, crowned him with glory and honor and set him over all the works of your heads. This was Adam's assignment to rule and reign in this world under God and to have charge of everything in this world. That's how God set it up. But because Lucifer, the devil, was able to convince Adam and Eve to rebel against God and join him and his and the dark side, if you will, the dark force. They became subject to the devil, and Adam usurped his. He gave his uh, his authority to the devil. The devil usurped Adam's authority. That's what makes him an authority. But what was forfeited by the first Adam is regained in the last Adam. We are. We are more than conquerors through Christ. He's made us uh, kings and priests unto him. We rule and reign in life by one Christ Jesus. He has given us exousia over all the dunamis of the enemy 
and nothing by any means shall hurt or harm us. Jesus said, in my name, authority, character, integrity, and honor, you shall cast out devils. He said that we can walk on devils and serpents and scorpions. That was a crazy signal there. That was uh, my phone telling me that I've been 10 minutes. Doesn't seem like 10 minutes, does it? Well, let's take a couple of more minutes. There's no rush. If you need to go someplace, you've got my permission. So I told you about the three heavens. Listen, the prince of this world, that's what Jesus called him in three different places in John. He called him the prince of this world, the God of this world, uh, Lucifer. Jesus believed uh, in the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He said, the prince of this world has come and he has nothing in me. So uh, he, Jesus understood this. And Jesus is the one who taught us about authority over devils. After we receive the Holy Ghost, we can cast out devils. Easy, piece of cake, right? But let me tell you something. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of Christians are caught up in the things of this world and they don't realize it. They have forsaken the things of God. They've forsaken study. They've forsaken prayer. They've forsaken praying in tongues. They've forsaken fellowship. They've forsaken getting together. One of my, one of my uh, sons in the Lord, whom I have raised up, since he was a teenager, actually, uh, got a hold of me recently, and he said, now listen, uh, we're going to another church now, and we're going to switch churches, and so uh, uh, you're not going to be our pastor anymore. We love you and, and everything, but uh, we should be faithful in our local church, give our tithes and offerings there. And I said, absolutely. If that's the way that God's lead, leading you, certainly submit yourself, be committed, and return your tithe there and pay your offerings there, wherever you want to give your offerings, and I released them. Well, a few months later, I, I had another chat with them, and I said to House Church, they said, oh, we're, uh, we're not going to church anymore. You have to do it with uh, RSVP. They only allow so many people in. That's too complicated, so we're not, we're not doing that. And we tried the online. We didn't like that, and so right now we're not doing anything. Yeah. I wonder who set up that agenda. I wonder who move them in that direction. There's a lot of people since this uh, pandemic, they've used the pandemic as an excuse to forsake the things of God. That's why it's even more important not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That, that's why Z Church is here. You don't have an excuse. No one has an excuse of not having a good, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, word-based church because there's one online called Z Church, and uh, we are committed and submitted to doing the will of God, providing spiritual covering, spiritual leadership, spiritual uh, instruction, and spiritual inspiration for you. Praise God. I I'm a real bona fide pastor. I'm not just somebody here talking on the Internet. I'm not someone just giving an opinion. I am pastoring people supernaturally. And if you don't have a church, you ought to hook up a Z church and, and get under the covering. Let's don't move out from under our covering and get back into the world's way of doing things. That's how we did things before we were saved. That's how we do, did things before we knew better. And, and uh, another thing, people are uh, Christians today. This is an observation, and I'll, uh, I'll kind of wind down here. Uh, too many Christians... Are, uh, are, are still caught up in, in the world system and doing things the world's way and be, being preoccupied with everything in the world. A, a lot of it is sideways energy. These conspiracy theories and these activisms and these protests and these causes that people get passionate about and they want to march and they want to loot and they want to burn. There's no place for Christians. We're supposed to pray. Nowhere in the Gospels do you read that the Apostle Paul that Jesus was a political activist. Uh, yeah, uh, Rome was doing wrong. Herod was doing wrong. Felix and Festus were doing wrong. But Jesus didn't get caught up in that. He came to seek and save the lost and preach the gospel and introduce people to heaven and heaven's way of doing things. And you come over into the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, the greatest apostle of them all, never got caught up in politics. He never got caught up in in, uh, you know, what everybody else was caught up in. There were a lot of things that he could have gotten caught up in. You know, the uh, Roman Empire wasn't just. Uh, Nero wasn't just. Uh, there were a lot of causes. He was mistreated. He could have sued. He could have protested. They could have carried signs. He could have organized his disciples to go out on marches. 
He didn't do that. He just kept preaching the gospel. We need to be careful that we don't get caught up in sideways energy. The devil knows that a house divided against itself cannot stand. And if he can get Christians divided and distracted, then he will be free to do what he wants to do and to enlarge his kingdom of darkness and bring more people into confusion and obscurity. Christian, it's time to awake. Let Christ give you light. And let's not let the God of this world blind our eyes like the children of obstinance and the children of disobedience. Well, I have run out of time. And so I'll just leave you with one thought. No man that warreth entangles himself in the affairs of this life that he might please him who's chosen him to be a soldier. Don't get caught up. Should should I vote? Certainly should you should vote. Uh, should I stand for what's right? Yes, but it's a matter of priorities. And so let Pastor Huggins ask you this question. Are your priorities right? Is it is it God and his kingdom first and everything else will follow in, in its proper order? Or have we allowed things to get upside down? Well, uh, I'm going to help you as much as I can get things right side up. Let me hear an amen. Okay, I've already talked to you about Z Church. Come be with me if you want a link. Send me an email, Pastor Larry at zchurch.life. I'll send you a link and a password. Uh, go to my website, uh, zchurch.life. You can get a link there. Love to see you at 10 o'clock a.m. Saturday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. And I'll see you here tomorrow on the Z Train.